Good day everyone. Have a guess where we are just based on what I'm showing you guys here. If I can hold the damn camera still. Yep, we're at the cinema. So, oh, I'm just taking as much footage of the um, projection equipment, you know, as I can. Um, before we go digital, I don't know when that'll be. It might not be for a while, but anyway, we're running the um, widescreen lens here, which is 1.85 to 1 aspect ratio as indicated by this um, aperture plate. The aperture plate um, isn't just a hole, it's actually um, actually um, the opening in this aperture plate isn't quite um, square and it's correcting for the um, fact that the screen's um, not you know, dead centre of the lens, the projector um, projects down onto the screen if you like, so it's got what they call keystone correction. Um, that, the top wiggle loop, compensates for the fact that the um, film is being fed at a, consist a constant speed from this top feed sprocket, but it starts and stops and pauses and then starts and stops and pauses again in the gate. The bottom wiggle loop's doing the same thing. Um, so that the, um, a bit of dirt in that optical pickup, so that the film goes through the um, optical pickup, which is the exciter lamp is um, the exciter lamp is there, and the pickup is there. And um, if you run a DTS um, soundtrack in a reader, you bolt the extra um, exciter lamp onto that milled um, or machined slot, and uh, you have the pickup in line with that. So we're only running the um, SR um, optical soundtrack, which is, um, this is a blank one, because um, it's, it's a head, but that's, the camera won't focus properly, it's the blank, it's, a, it's, it's the actual blue that you can see, not that it's focusing properly, maybe I can get it to focus um, up here. But anyway, it's a bit hard to focus on something that's just a blue streak. And in between the sprocket holes, it's not going to focus either. Yeah, th there you go, you can sort of see it. Um, in between the sprocket holes, that's the DTS. There you go, now you can see it better. So, the optical is the blue cyan soundtrack. And, um, please focus again. And the pattern... The... the, pa the the pattern between the um, sprocket holes that you saw a second ago, but it's not going to focus again. That's the actual DTS soundtrack, in which we don't run. But anyway, um, this roller just has um, O-rings at each end because film is supposed to only contact on the edges. If you contact on the image area of the film, it wears out the image, and you get um, scratches, which show up as um, blue to yellow stri um, streaks uh, running vertically down the screen and they're a pain, it just ruins the whole presentation. So anyway, um, this um, this roller here is got a, a short shaft and a flywheel, it's not driven at all, it's not motor driven. What drives this around and it spins can't really see it because the camera's not focusing. There we go, zoom out, it's better, sorry. What actually spins this around is the fact that this roller here, which is spring-loaded, puts pressure on the film and the film is being pulled through the steady roller um, by this lower um, feed sprocket. Um, so everything contacts on the edge of the film. Um, that's the actual intermittent sprocket there, and I, I can open the gate without it disturbing any settings because it is actually threaded up. Intermittent sprocket. These uh, little rollers are actually um, ceramic, and they steady the film side to side in the gate. Um, this is this is the skate, and the skate um, simply holds the film against the intermittent sprocket, and it sits this way. That's, that's cut out at the bottom allows for the intermittent sprocket and again it puts pressure on the outer edges of the film only not the actual um, image area 
and you can get them in black and they're just nylon I believe so um, so yeah spring loaded it has an adjustment um, vertically up this um, this um, skate or oh, trap door whatever you want to call it and um, you, you adjust it to allow two thicknesses of film that allows for any splices or anything um, and it also has another adjustment which is here that adjusts the spring pressure on the actual um, on the trap door gate trap door whatever you want to call it um, that shows you how to thread the film up if you don't know but um, this is if you're running if it's, a, it's, it's as if you're running the projector without the platter um, German projector of course Kinnerton piss that off um, that's just um, a temporary stop the picture of course we've got the um, got the dowser which is a really heavy um, I think it's made of ceramic and that blocks the heat and the light and um, that's the actual um, shutter so I'll power it up I'll power it up and um, I'll just inch it inching is just a bit dusty inching is just exactly as it sounds so you can see the actual um, shutter So there are two cutouts in the sprocket. Oh, sprocket! Now oh, my brain's on holiday. There are two cutouts in the shutter because each frame of film is exposed twice, not once. So, um, what it does is it moves the film down. It moves the film down, or the frame down, opens the shutter then closes it, then it opens the shutter again on that same frame, then the shutter closes, then the frame moves down to the next frame and repeats the process. And that's um, to compensate for the human's um, human eye slash brain um, persistence of motion. Um, so you get the illusion of motion out of pictures if you like. And um, the film goes through the gate of the projector rather slowly. It's um, 24 frames a second, but you see 48 frames a second on the screen. So that's why they expose each frame twice. Now the actual, um, you never operate it, of course, without the um, cover on it because it can cut your fingers off, actually. But it's got an adjustment. Can't see because of this stupid, uh, stupid little lamp. It's actually got an adjustment on that sprocket, on that, um, I keep going to call it a sprocket, very sad. Anyway, the shutter has an adjustment, and if the adjustment's wrong, um, the film won't be stationary when the, when, when the shutter opens. So, actually a really important adjustment. So, and we've got the um, racking control, or framing control if you like. Focus control, which simply moves the um, lens back and forth. This is a very old-fashioned way of doing it, but anyway, um, it's got a double, you know, plate there if you like. So this is actually pretty heavy because, you know, these lamps kick out a lot of heat, and um, if, for example, the film was to stop for some reason, like um, due to a, a, a jam or something. Um, the lamp is well capable of burning a hole straight through the film and um, this top wiggle loop I just noticed it's actually a bit too big so what I'm going to do is um, adjust it back a bit it's hard to do it with one hand but it's not impossible so that's not a bad setting it gives you adjustment of, of the racking which is moving the frame up and down in, in the um, gate of the projector um, so you can see the uh, wiggle loop at the top actually moves around. Um, so if you've got the um, wiggle loop at the top adjusted too large, what happens is it hits that um, and plate there. And uh, of course that would damage the film. So I'm going to put the camera down so I can adjust it correctly. And um, you guys can just watch me do that from a distance. Because um, I, I, I want to give it one more sprocket hole. So... 
that's exactly where I want it. The bottom one, pretty well where I want it to. If they're wrong, then it, it flaps around and gets quite noisy. So, um, yeah, it's just a little bit of insight. I don't know what leader this is or anything. So, widescreen. Um, See so the widescreen film, if I can sort of get better light, the widescreen film has these two black bands. So this is in ratio. Um, Cinemascope is an anamorphic lens and um, I would like to show you guys but I don't want this video to be too long. Um, it's like a fisheye lens, it just morphs the image so that it um, is twice as wide as it is high. And um, that's how you, that's how they get the wide screen image out of a um, cinemascope print. It's 2.35 to one, so it's actually wider than widescreen. Some examples of um, damaged film. We should have a frame that's been burnt, but it's not here. This is just some examples of scratches that happen. Um, don't know what nurse been done to this. I'd say not joined correctly. Um, yeah, you can join it out of, you know, out of, um, okay, let me start again. When you join film, four sprocket holes make up one frame of film. Now, if you join three sprocket holes instead of four, when it goes through the gate of the projector, it will be incorrect. So, it will move on the screen. So, anyway, this is my little video, um, about the equipment, and, um, you might actually... You know, I don't want that to be too large, but I'm happy with that reasonably, so turn our rectifier on. So yeah, she runs quite a bit of current through the lamp. That's um, now that I've got a decent camera. Specifications. Yushio make the best projection lamps. Um, I find that OSRAM projection lamps aren't quite as good. Now, it's a little bit too high, so adjust it down so that it's on the 70 amp setting. Um, that's how many hours this um, machine has on it. The bloody camera will focus. The, the light in the background sort of buggering it up. There we go. Good quality hour meter and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this slightly more detailed um, explanation of our equipment, but um, I, I would like to do a lot more videos of it. Um, I'm going to do a more I'm going to do a more detailed video of threading the equipment up and starting it. That video. Um, will probably be about 15 minutes long. So thank you very much for watching and enjoy your day.